بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الذي لا يضره مع اسمه شيء في الارض ولا في السماء وهو السميع العليم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To the Wali of the Bangsa Moro, Sheikh Khalifa Nandu, Mr. Speaker, College in the August Body, Fellow Ministers, Friends and Partners for Peace and Development, Fellow Workers in the Bangsa Moro Government, Ladies and gentlemen, my warmest courtesies to all of you. Isang mapayapang hapon po sa ating lahat. The opening of our session today marks the Parliament's preparedness to embrace the new normal shaped by the ongoing coronavirus pandemic. It also marks the Parliament's commitment to fulfill the amana that was entrusted to us by our people. To my dear colleagues who continuously serve the Bangsamoro, despite the challenges posed by the pandemic, be it through relief operations, providing health care support, or even simply reaching out to them, you have helped us in making sure the Bangsamoro government is always here for its constituents, mabuhay kayong lahat. Mr. Speaker and colleagues in the Parliament, I know that we are fully aware of what is expected to us during this transition period. The enactment of priority legislations the transition plan that will continue to carefully implement the programs and policies of the government. The policies of the government of the day align with our call for moral governance. And the 12 point priority agenda and the realization of important provisions of the organic law. All of this on top of running a transition government that is responsive to the needs, struggles, and aspiration of the Bangsamoro, it is indeed a big task. A task that we must, by all means, fulfill, to give justice to the blood and sweat and tears of our people. Ladies and gentlemen, as we begin the session of the Parliament today, it is important to remind ourselves of the strategies and priorities of the government of the day for this calendar year. In meeting our targets and desired outcome, the government of the day shall be guided further by three strategic directions, namely, one, institution building and strengthening, two, strategic partnership, and perhaps more importantly, 
di ramdam ng tao, allow me to elaborate on these strategic directions by using our recent experiences with COVID-19 as these are evident in our ongoing response. The COVID-19 pandemic is primarily a health crisis, but we all know that managing the spread of the virus and protecting our people require convergence of efforts of pertinent ministries and offices in the Bangsamoro region. As such, we were quick in constituting the Bangsamoro Interagency Task Force on COVID-19 partnership with our national counterparts is also key in the Bangsamoro government's programs and policies. We likewise engage in partnership with our local and international civil society our civil society organizations, and of course, to our local government. As they are at the forefront of our governance, this vertical and horizontal strategic partnerships were crucial in ensuring that our efforts were not only responsive but also complementary from the ground up. After all, we know that for us to truly and quickly heal as one, we need to move as one. <clears throat> A government responsive to the needs of its people requires a strong bureaucracy and system complemented by efficient staff and leadership as well as adequate facilities when the COVID-19 pandemic reached our soil one of the biggest challenges not only for the Bangsamoro region but for the country in general was the existing capacity of our health care facilities. The PCR testing was also a challenge, especially during the earlier stage of the public health emergency. As such, there was a dire need to strengthen the capacity of our health infrastructure. Along these lines, we strategically partnered with the Cotabato Regional and Medical Center. 14 million pesos worth of assistance was provided for the much needed laboratory upgrade and personnel complement required for meeting the criteria for a COVID-19 PCR testing alhamdulillah CRMC is now one of the accredited laboratories in the country we are also processing a similar assistance to Amay Pakpak Medical Center in Marawi City Considering that majority of the current confirmed cases in the region are in Lanao del Sur, the government of the day is likewise looking at increasing our health care facilities and capacity in the island provinces of Sulu, Basilan, Tawi Tawi, Insha'Allah. The main component of our COVID. 19 response is putting the people, especially the mostly affected families, at the core of our policies and programs. 
Siniguro natin na ang Bang Samuro government ay ramdam ng tao. As of today, we have distributed at least 433,161 food packs and relief goods to our target. Included in our collective effort is the allocation of 200 sacks of rice that each member of the parliament distributed to their respective constituents. The government also provided social amelioration and other forms of assistance to our people. We were also one of the first government entities in Mindanao that was able to provide the much-needed augmentation of medical supplies and facilities to our frontline workers. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 crisis is indeed a big challenge, but it also serves as an opportunity for us to test ourselves and showcase what we are capable of doing despite undergoing the difficult stage of the transition period. Mr. Speaker, colleagues in the August body, let us carry this momentum as we begin our session today, particularly when we discuss and enact the following important pieces of legislation this calendar year. As approved in the Bangsamoro Organic Law, we shall fast track the enactment of priority legislations that will serve as the foundation for a strong and responsive Bangsamoro government. During the last cabinet meeting, we have thoroughly discussed few remaining issues in the draft administrative code. You can expect, inshallah, that this will be transmitted to the August body soon and the cabinet shall conduct special meetings and go through the other draft priority codes to expedite further the finalization of this important legislation, inshallah. The Bangsamoro Regional Development Plan also needs to be passed as soon as possible. Members of the Bangsamoro Economic and Development Council or BEDSI, which was originally scheduled to convene in March, met two weeks ago to begin the review and approval of the draft plan. I expect that this will be finalized soon so that we can utilize the Special Development Fund for the rehabilitation and development of conflict-affected communities in the Bangsamoro. You know that this is a requirement in the release of the Special Development Fund. Soon we are going to once again deliberate on our budget for next year. I am confident that we will again come up with a budget that will further our programs align with moral governance and our 12-point priority agenda in the year's budget and emphasis should also be given in our ongoing public health crisis. The reason why we acted quickly during this pandemic is because we have large, big amount of our budget during this year for health and, uh, and uh, social services. 
our biggest our budget should contribute to enabling further a bang samuro government that can address the needs of our people as we continue to battle our common enemy that is COVID-19. Consistent with our 12-point priority agenda, we shall continue to pass legislations and implement programs for our brothers and sisters in Marawi, who after three years are still dreaming of the returning to their homes. This August body approved last year a 500 million budget allocation in support for the Marawi Rehabilitation Program. We can still use this existing budget. We are also looking forward to see the results of consultations conducted by the Parliament's Special Committee on Marawi Rehabilitation to see if we can assist with any programs or projects. If necessary, we can also complement a further allocation of a special amount in this year's budget. The different ministries and offices are currently undergoing their respective hiring process for the new staffing pattern in the regional in the region. People in position like us will come and go, but for those qualified applicants, many of them will serve as permanent ingredients in the bureaucracy that we carefully design to address the struggles and aspirations of our people. As such, it is extremely important that as mentioned in the Bangsamoro Organic Law, we get the right people through an independent and strictly merit-based and credible placement and hiring process with at most consideration for gender and ethnic balance. As I have said before, people with necessary qualifications, skills, integrity, and passion to serve the Bangsamoro have a rightful place in, this, in our bureaucracy, inshallah. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, we are blessed with the golden opportunity now more than ever. The Bank Samuro is in a better position to put an end to the decades-long struggles for identity and self-governance. Let us all challenge ourselves in making this a reality. No other time can we do this and no other time can we start to deliver to our people the uh, ne necessary uh, social services. And as we resume our work in this esteemed hall, may the Almighty Allah bless us with wisdom passion, and a clear heart for everything that we do is for him alone. And this, my colleagues, remains to be one of the reasons why we continue working under the tenets of moral governance. Thank you so much, and wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.